Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. It's me, Kia Simone, and we are here today to talk about ladies who listed Atlanta and everything that's going on around it, because child hell has broken loose, all right? Kiana done quit her damn job. Crystal around here with indecent proposals. It's just a whole damn mess. So, let's just get into it. I took a couple days off to celebrate my little birthday, and next thing I know is just... Hell all over the place, but we're going to break it right on down and get right into it. Hey, before we do, first of all, thank y'all so much for all the birthday love. Y'all are the best. Y'all have been the best part. And be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. All right, let's get into it. So, I'm going to try to just go like hot point by hot point because the f episodes three and four... I was getting ready to review those. Next thing I know, I got comments and people calling me about, did you hear Kiana quit the show? I had to go figure out what's going on with that. Then episode five came on and blew my damn mind. So I said, well, 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 hold on. Let me, let's, let's go back and let's just do it all together. We're going to take a minute um, to recap three and four. And then we're going to talk about this explosion that is five. Because what the hell? So episode three essentially picks up, you know, after the fight and everybody is rehashing their individual experiences. Kiana is talking to her husband about it. Tiffany and Tiana are talking to each other about it. And Crystal is talking to her therapist about it. Now, let me tell you how I feel about Crystal talking to her therapist. I am a huge proponent of therapy, okay? However, the only time therapy works is if you're willing to tell the truth. If you ain't willing to tell the truth, you wasting a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money because we trying to fix a lie. So my thing is, I feel like, my, this is just my observation watching the show. I feel like Crystal uses therapy to reposition herself in the narrative so that she gets to become the victim rather than the villain. And she is getting a qualified professional to co-sign her as the victim and not the villain. It's kind of a byproduct of being highly manipulative. Which is not always a bad thing, but you got to know how to use your skills for good. And Crystal was making herself the martyr, so to speak. Like she was falling on the sword to save Robin from herself. Girl... You know I know the therapist knows that is not the case. But moving on, because I ain't going to spend a whole lot of time on a lie of a therapy session. Like, there's nothing to break down here if you ain't willing to be honest. Okay, bye. We get to see Tiffany and Robin meet uh, to bond over their mental health struggles. And Tiffany allows Robin to have the opportunity, basically, to connect to someone else who can relate to her and her issues rather than ridicule her for her issues, as Crystal has. And Tiffany makes it very clear that she was really uncomfortable with the environment and the way that Crystal handled the situation and wanted Robin to know that she had a friend. In episodes three and four, I feel like there was a lot of filler activity. So one of the things we get to see is Tiana going to view this property, uh, this luxury condo that she is being offered the opportunity to represent the seller on. Um, it's a beautiful condo. We get to see that she is going to propose a $1.5 million listing price and the owner is not hearing it. So then we get to see Robin and Kiana meet so that we can finally hash out this $13,000 issue because that would be an issue for me. You want 13 grand. You know how many shoes that is? Yeah, we need to talk. So we get to see them sit down, come together, and talk about their issues. So first, Kiana starts by broaching the issue of how dismissive Robin was when Kiana brought up the issue that she has with her at the dinner. And as much as I like Robin, I feel Robin doesn't own the stuff she does and says. Robin kind of likes to change things in the moment. You were dismissive when Kiana brought up that she had an issue now. Was it the right time and place? Probably not. And so I get 
Robin having an issue, but it was it's not so much what you say is how you say it. So you can have an issue with her bringing it up at that time, just like she can have an issue with how you approached business with her, but it was how Robin handled her. And I feel like Robin isn't taking ownership for that. And, and Kiana called her on that. Kiana says, you know, you're saying now, you know, you weren't dismissive and you were just saying, I'm sorry that I made you feel that way. She said, but your tone right now is totally different than the tone that you had. And tone makes a difference, okay? I'm t it, How somebody talks to you <laughs> can really change the outcome of a situation. I'm telling you. And Robin feels like Kiana should just accept any kind of apology she offers because apologies ain't her thing. And so because I don't normally apologize, since I'm owning this and apologizing, you need to really just take whatever apology I'm giving you. I'm sorry that it's not the kind of apology you want, but any form of remorse from me, you need to be grateful for, Robin. Robin. This is why you have the likes of Crystal as your best friend. You got to do better, sis. You got to do better. And then Robin tries to make Kiana the problem by saying, well, you made the situation uncomfortable by bringing that up. Well, you know you and this girl had an issue before you called her or had her called on your behalf to say, would you come down here and be a part of my whole grand business idea? You no, you had beef with her. It's the entitlement for me. It's the expectation that people should just put aside how you treat them and just yield to whatever you want. It's, it's, it's kind of mind boggling for me. Now we get to the $13,000 elephant in the room. Kiana says that she had four days to move 26 contracts. And she went to Robin and asked Robin for her help. And Robin told her $500. Here's where Kiana lost me. Kiana said, in my head, I heard $500 per contract. Well, what did she say outside of your head? If she said one thing and you heard something else in your head, you can't make her responsible for what you heard. She's not responsible for your filters and how you filter, filter information and communications that you receive. Like, that's what you heard. Now, don't get me wrong. I have the same issue sometimes, so I understand. Like, But this is the difference. I do have to ask, like, hold on now. Is you saying... That's all it takes. Clarify, communicate. It closes the doors to misunderstanding and miscommunication because Robin is basically like, even if Robin was insinuating $500 per contract, you just offered her a loophole as to you came up with that on your own. You, Because she kept saying, in my head, I heard, and I thought you meant per contract. And oh, you thought I was mad about $500? I was mad about $13,000. Well, like Robin said, that's on you because it's your responsibility to communicate. It's your responsibility to go back and ask, am I understanding you correctly that you're asking me for $500 per contract? So in total, you're asking me for $13,000. Is that correct? All it takes. You put the ball in her court, let her give you a yes or a no. So that when you decide I'm done with this, oh, you can be sure and not have to backpedal and eat a bunch of words that don't taste good. I'm just saying. So then we get to see Kiana, Crystal, and Kira go to lunch together because they all have an issue with Robin. Let me tell you one thing that I do not like. I do not like when people band together because their commonality is the dislike 
of another person because they have a mutual enemy. That thing works my nerves. Like that's kind of, don't get me wrong, I really like Kiana and I don't think Kiana is a hater, but it's kind of ultimate hater moves. When, 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 when we band together because we don't like that, like, please. Y'all are too fly, too fierce, too fine to be vibrating this low. Like, let's raise the vibration, please. Thank you. But anyway, they all talk about their issues. Kiana lets the group know that she and Robin have met, discussed their issues, and moved on. Kira puts it out that basically her issue with Robin is not being taken seriously. She doesn't like the fact that she tried to play her like a child. Well, Kira, that's the flip side of the coin of trying to play somebody like an old lady. They get to call you a kid. Crystal pretends to care that there is a breakdown between her and Robin. And you know, and I haven't heard from her at all. And that's one of my best friends, Q. Crystal, please go to hell. Like, I don't even have time. I don't. And I want to point out the fact that they had a good laugh at Trigger and how triggering trigger is I, I i i just just hold on to that next we get to see robin go to her client carlos's home <laughs> say something robin <laughs> i don't give a damn what nobody say i'ma just tell you what i believe that is a client with some benefits they they doing more than real estate deals, in my opinion. Robin showed up to this man's house like a girlfriend looking for her man. Apparently, he has some listing that Robin was supposed to be the, the agent for. And he took the listing from her and gave it to someone else. So she's decided she's going back to get her listing. And she shows up to this man's house like Lynn Whitfield and a thin line between love and hate. He sends his assistant down who looks like she is on a mission to not let this upstairs. Robin is, where's Carlos? Where's Carlos? Oh, he's out of the country. He had to handle some business. Robin behaving like the I ain't going nowhere scorned ass woman decides, well, you know, that's not good enough for me. I'm going to call him. So she FaceTimes him and she says, do you see where I'm at? And he said, yes, you're in my damn house. That man was upstairs in the closet, okay? I don't give a damn what nobody says. He was upstairs in the closet and told old girl, whatever you do, don't let her up here. Take your ass down there. I don't care what you got to tell her. Make some shit. Tell her I'm out with Batman solving crimes. But do not let her up here. A and Robin just was insistent that he is going to talk to her. And that is my listing. And your bitch has my video on Zillow right now. And I said, what in the real estate girlfriend on the side hell is going on here? What the... How you show up to this man house in the middle of the day carrying on but you want your listing back? I, I just, it just seemed a tad bit unprofessional to me. It, it just gave blurred lines, but what do I know? We get to see Tiffany and Tiana get together to work out and, you know, basically put time into themselves and be more than just moms and professionals. And Tiffany is talking about the upcoming opening of her law office. Um, she lets it be known Crystal is not invited because she wants positive vibes only. Hmm. Robin is invited because she and Robin have recently bonded. She really likes her. She feels like she understands her. And she talks about Robin's backstory, which allows Tiana to get into her story. She lets us know that she grew up with a mother that struggled with addiction. Uh, that she was raised by her father with her siblings. And that 
her upbringing and some of the struggles that she's had to overcome are what drive her in terms of real estate, not necessarily the money. And we kind of hear that theme um, with a lot of these ladies that it's more than the money. It's, it's about a level of freedom. It's about a level of graduation. It's about a level of lifting the generations. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of what they give me. Like, they found their path for changing their lives. Uh, so it's more than about money. It's about opportunity. It's about purpose. And that's a big deal. I really, really get it. I really get it. And so that mo I really wanted to touch on that because that was just really... Like, touching to me, and I, I, and I like the fact that while these women are absolutely beautiful, they are powerful, they are professional, they are successful, they're vulnerable, and they let us see them. And, you know, sometimes you need to see that. You, you see somebody on the top of their game, and you don't know what they had to endure to get there. And hearing stories like that let you know that, if you have some stuff in your background that was difficult to overcome, you can do this too. And so that's why I wanted to really, really touch on this and appreciate this kind of moment because that's what it does for me. It tells me, keep on pushing, you know, press forward because no matter what your background is, no matter what you've been through, come from, you know, no matter what your beginning is, it doesn't determine your end. And that was just a powerful moment for me. Moving on. We get to see Kira meet with her former client. We get to see his home and the home updates that he's done since he bought the home. It's an absolutely beautiful home. He's a trucking mogul who is absolute black excellence. He makes a lot of money. Bought him a very nice house. Paid off his mama's house. He's getting ready to retire his mama and buy her a new house. And he wants Kira's help doing that. And y'all better everybody go. Shit, everybody making money. God damn. I, I'm... I'm coming. I'm, 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 I'm coming. So we get to go back and see Robin meet with her client. That's what we gonna call him. Client. So Robin meets with her client and he lets her know, yeah, you can't get your listing back, baby, because it's sold. It's sold for $2.25 million cash. Yeah, they had, they had cash. So wasn't nobody uh, waiting on you. He breaks down to her that, She's going to have to learn humility. He calls it eating shit. But essentially what he's trying to break down to her is you can't go head up with everybody. Especially when you're doing business and you're in the business of sales and you want people's business. People have the option to go elsewhere. Yes, you're good at what you do. You're very smart. You are you can be the very best at what you do, but manners will take you where money won't. And if you don't have manners and you don't know how to treat people and you don't know how to talk to people, it's gonna cost you a whole lot of money because I'm sure $2.25 million got a real nice commission on it. Okay? Okay. Now, he kind of felt bad for tapping that ass. And so he said, now what I will do is I will give you all of my other listings now that I done taught you a lesson. Now, pipe down and make your money. Now, this is where stuff gets interesting. Crystal invites Kira to her office for a five-star lunch. This is some practice that she's developed where she wines and dines potential business partners, I guess. Um, people that she would like to do business with. And she would like to have Kira do some of her closings with her. And so she's basically whining and dining Kira to present to her the idea that, you know, maybe you could split some of your closings between you because you use Tiffany exclusively, but maybe you could bring a few over to me. And, you know, Kira is like, mm, okay, girl, we'll see. They do take this opportunity to bond over their relationship status and relationship issues that they are both single and have come out of long-term relationships and are, you know, kind of just refooting after that. And they find that that's a common ground for them to bond on. And we're going to see about that bond in a little while. 
we go to Tiffany's office opening. Now, I'm going to just tell you, I felt like the energy Kira brought, I'm liking Kira a little bit more as the episodes go on. But it just felt like she was determined to cause an issue. Tiffany is getting ready to go mingle with her guests at her opening. And Kira, for some reason, thinks that this is the best time to tell her, yeah, I know we're at your opening. <laughs> and before you go mingle with your guests. I just wanted to mention that, yeah, Crystal had me at her office for one of those five-star lunches because she's trying to get my business. And so, you know, Tiffany is like, well, that's not cool. Why would she do that? But that's why she ain't invited. So at Tiffany's opening, Robin approaches the lady and, ladies and wants to take a group picture. And Kira is like, mm -mm, no, honey, I don't want to be in your pictures. You unfollowed me on Instagram. You won't be tagging me on Instagram. You can go straight to hell. No, thank you. So they take the pictures without her and Robin goes to talk to Kiana and she's kind of talking over the issues that have happened with the ladies recently. And she talks over the issues with Crystal and, you know, Kiana lets her know you were kind of out of line with your reaction and you putting your hands on her like that was a little bit much. A lot of bit much. And then they get into talking about the whole Kira dynamic. And, you know, Robin is like, I tried to take a picture with the baby. And you saw how that went. Kiana suggests that maybe y'all need to talk. And Robin says, all right, well, what better time than now? Let me tell y'all something. Y'all gonna have to learn to stop hashing issues out at people's celebrations. Please make reservations somewhere else. But don't hash out your issues at other people's celebrations. Y'all like to fight at parties. I, I just cannot, okay? In their talk, I did want to mention that Robin tells Kiana that she feels the only reason that she and Crystal are friends is because Robin was doing business with Crystal's ex. And she feels that Crystal only befriended her to make sure that she wasn't sleeping with her ex. Well, if you believe that, then why are you friends with her? What is the premise of y'all's friendship if you truly believe that the only reason this woman is your friend is to make sure you weren't sleeping with her man, but you call her your best friend. What kind of friend are you? Moving on. Uh, we get to see Kira and Robin sit down and hash out their issues. And I will say that, especially cause let, let me tell you, if I drag you publicly, I will praise you publicly, okay? And I really feel like Kira was much more mature in this interaction. It did come across more like she just wasn't going to, I'm not going to say sorry for something I'm not sorry for. I'm not going to pretend to own something I don't feel like I'm responsible for. And I get that. If you believe you're right, I get it. Um, but she just was much more mature in her approach. And I respect it. So then we get to see Tiana show a home that was designed and built by a black female architect. They are listing the home at $2.8 million and she is showing it to a former NFL player um, who is considering purchasing the home. They end up coming to terms that he ain't paying 2.8, but he'll pay 1.9. And uh, there's pretty much a hell no in that gap. Moving on. This little get together here blew my mind. Crystal and Kira get together. Crystal invites Kira out, you know, for, I guess, dinner and drinks, child. I don't know. She is truly whining and dining her. And they are talking about their dating lives and things of that nature. And Crystal lets it be known that she's dating a guy who is into the poly life. He is into polyamory. And, yes, he, uh is currently the boyfriend of someone's wife uh, in addition to dating Crystal. And he has basically introduced Crystal to the poly life and invited her to a poly party. And she would like to know if Kira is interested in attending a poly party. 
party. Kara looked at her like, bitch, what? What I like to go to what? Say, say what now? What in the menage a trois hell are you asking me? Crystal is like, uh, no, it's not what you think, you know. I don't think a poly party is people just having sex all over the place. I think it's more of getting to know people. But, you know, I've never been to one and maybe we could go together. Crystal, just, just, just. Just tell Kira, you think she cute and you want to play some games behind the doors and under the covers with her. But Kira ain't going for that shit. Kira said, um, a poly party? No, baby, I'm sorry. Um, I'm already scheduled for a Holy Ghost party. I got the, I, I got a fast that I'm doing and then I got to go talk to God and then, um, anything... You know, with more than two or three people, if they gather together in his name, then he is there in the midst and I can come to that. But I can't come to this. But you tell me how it go, girl. Kira, Kira looked at her like, bitch, you got to be crazy. She said, uh, no, 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 I'm not into that. Me, You know, to each his own. I don't knock nobody and what they into. But that just ain't my thing. No, thank you. No, thank you very much. Um... Personally, I'm looking for a husband and not one to share, but you know, whatever gets y'all's rocks off. You and your boyfriend and his girlfriend and her husband. Whatever. And I don't blame her. What? Why would you, Do I want to go to a poly party? Bet. See, y'all's a little too comfortable for me, okay? Y'all, y'all, it's a... Save your five star lunch next time. Mm -mm. If this, if you, if this all you know how to do, after you buy me a five star lunch, keep it. I'll go to checkers. So then we get to see Kiana planning her one year anniversary celebration for her um, real estate firm. They have done fifty million dollars in real estate in their first year, and girl, you better go. And so she is planning a first class celebration at the Waldorf. A story, honey, where everyone can wear their fabulous jewels and furs and their good wigs, honey. Then we get to see Crystal meet her dad. Not meet her dad, but we get <laughs> we get to see Crystal sit down and talk to her dad. Her dad is in town. She's making him breakfast. He comes over and talks, and for some reason, she is bringing up the situation with Robin with everybody. And every time she brings the situation up, she gets bolder and bolder as the victim in the story. Like, girl, please go to hell with this whole mission you are on to recruit people to be on your side and tell you you're right. That's all you're looking for. But anyway, they talk about the fact that her dad has um, a few properties. He They're talking about a property that essentially she thought he had a mortgage on that he is looking to renovate and rent out, but he let her know it is paid in full and that that is the key to retiring. And I wanted to highlight that moment because that is a jewel as well. The key to wealth is real estate. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody say. I buy into that. I believe that. That the key to wealth is real estate. And if you want to invest in your future, you want to invest in your retirement, invest in real estate. I am a big proponent of it. That's one of the reasons I was so uh, intrigued by this show, actually, because I love real estate. I actually went to school for real estate, um, and it just didn't feel like I had the time or I was at the right place in my life at that time. But I love real estate, and I am a big proponent of being a property owner. So if you have the opportunity or if you can create the opportunity for yourself, take that opportunity because it opens up a whole lot more doors. Please, y'all, like listen to what this man is saying. He is set up to retire and at the very least from one property pull in $3,000 a month. Now, if you got four or five, that's a pretty healthy retirement. I'm just saying. And for as much as Crystal get on my nerves, I love that damn leather dress she was wearing in those confessionals. Oh my God. That girl gets on my damn nerves, but she is beautiful. And she be fly. But K 
carry on. Then we move on to seeing Kiana and her husband meeting with, I believe, a fertility specialist where Kiana is looking to have a baby, um, but she is having some reproductive issues. They've tried IVF. Uh, I believe she's 38 or 39. And, um, you know, and they're talking about the risks, the complications, um, you know, the hurdles that she faces in terms of having a baby. And I just want to say that I think it's extremely brave of her. I just think she's a real brave girl. The doctor, you know, does bring up how the best age for women to conceive is probably before 28, but we're so career driven that, you know, most women are not looking to conceive until later. And I was kind of set aside by the look that Kiana's husband gave her. Like, it was kind of, there was a very contemptuous kind of a side eye. Like, yeah, she wanted to be, you know, she wanted to build her business and now we ain't got no baby. Uh, I'm sure he meant no harm. And I'm sure he loves his wife. I'm sure he supports her every goal, her every endeavor, and wants to see her be the best her. But, it just ain't cool to, you know, side-eye a woman for pursuing the fullness of herself. And it's not fair to blame a career because some of us experience fertility issues even at or what, what are supposed to be the height of your fertile years. So it's not fair to blame a career. It's not fair to side-eye a woman because she decided to put everything into herself. It's not fair to do that. And, my, and this is just my opinion. But, you know, anything can be the complication. And so it's just, it, it ain't fair. Now, I don't say that to bash her husband because he does seem very supportive and he seems like he loves his wife and he has a right to his feelings. Well, we can't you know, expect that a man does not have feelings and doesn't have a right to express those feelings. But I just wanted to put it on the table as my observation, as my feeling about the matter that, you know, let's not give, let's not drag career women and, you know, blame their career for their infertility. It just it, it don't make sense. We get to go with Robin to a new client. Go Robin. She goes to see this absolutely beautiful bachelor loft that she is going to be listing. And I just have to say, that confessional look that Robin is giving with the blonde bob and that beaded neck piece and that all in one, she is giving Miranda from the Devil Wears Prada. Do you hear me? I mean, she is just serving fierceness and fabulousness in your face. Robin is messy as hell, but that is a bad itch. Do you hear me? I just loved it. I'm sorry. I love the whole look, but you know, moving on. So the episode comes to an end with Kiana's party. We get to see everybody come together. They're all looking very beautiful. And Kiana says, you know, when Robin arrives that, listen, I feel like Robin and Crystal need to stay on opposite sides of the room. I have spent a lot of money. We all look real good and y'all won't be ruining my night with y'all's drama, okay? And Robin arrives and says, basically, I don't think that's the best idea. I think I should actually talk to Crystal because I can feel her energy and she feels very sad. And I think that is quite intuitive, okay? I, I think that's hitting the nail on the head. So Crystal kind of floats over, makes her way over, and they are in close proximity. And what else is going to happen except they're going to speak? So Robin turns around to address Crystal, and Crystal's oh my god, look at your smile. You look so amazing. And would you like to come over to the side and talk? And so she and Robin go to talk aside. And Crystal says to Robin, well, you don't look enthusiastic. And Robin says, yeah, because you could, you should have came and found me 21 days ago. And Crystal says, well, how could I when you blocked me? Robin responds to Crystal and says, well, I didn't block your phone number. And Crystal says, well, you want me to run after you like you give me penis.
What? Do you run after penis? Is that what you do? Like, so basically, you will screw over your girlfriends. You don't care how you treat them. You will dismiss and disregard their experience of you. But if they were giving you penis, you would chase them down. My girl, take your desperate ass on. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. That's where this episode came to an end, and we will get ready for this Friday's episode. However, let's get into Kiana quitting this damn show. I had to go look at some stuff. And normally, let me tell y'all, I don't follow these people outside of these shows because I, I, I'm just not about to consume my life with them. I just don't. I watch the show. The show entertains me or drives me nuts, whatever you like to call it. And then I come down here and talk about what I have seen on the show. So I don't typically follow a lot of these people outside of the shows. However, I was just so taken aback at hell breaking loose. I said, well, let me go see what's going on. So I go taking a look and watching some interviews and things. And Kiana is basically expressing that she decided to quit this show because she does not like the light that she is being casted in. Um, it, it was proposed as one thing. It started out being one thing. And as it unfolds and comes out of Pandora's box, it is something else. And she has built her life in such a way that she is not dependent on this show. She is, she said, I already have a national platform. I have a podcast. <laughs> she already has a real estate firm. She is already doing her thing. And yes, this was an avenue of income, a great avenue of income. Yes, this was an avenue of exposure, but what is it really if it's exposing me in a, or casting me rather, in a light that's not friendly to me? That is not the image that I put forth. That is not the truth of me. And so I get that when something is bringing out the worst in you, separate from it. I, and I'm in that place myself with making changes and transitions that are, you know, it might seem crazy to everybody else because it's, you know, oh my God, that's an amazing opportunity. However, if it's not right for you, it's not right for you. And you have to do what's right for you. When you make a decision for your life, it's for your life. You have to live with that decision. So you can't make decisions for other people and what other people think are just these massive opportunities that you can't give up. Maybe you wouldn't give it up. But I built my life in such a way that I have to be a slave to nothing. And I understand. I get it. I respect it. Now, maybe this show has served its purpose for her. It has introduced her to an audience of people that didn't know who she was. I didn't know who she was before this show. I do now. I can go find her on social media platforms now. You know, I know what she's about, what she represents now. Yeah, she, and she says she's going to finish out her contractual obligations. I guess meaning she's going to finish everything that is a trip that, that connects to the show. And then she's out. And I understand. I respect it. And the whole idea of expecting people to stay somewhere that they're not happy is an idea of the past. Cheers to moving on. But that's it. That's all. That's the end of these three episodes. We will resume. In a couple of days with episode six, I have to sit down and watch Ready to Love. Um, I want to tell y'all, I know that y'all have been bearing with me with this one episode a week. I am going through some changes and transitions that are going to open up availability so that we can spend more time together. Okay. I want to thank y'all for bearing with me the way that y'all have. I want to thank y'all for being as supportive as y'all have. I want to thank y'all for the birthday love. All the birthday wishes. Thank you. I had an awesome birthday. It was absolutely amazing. I am so excited for the year to come. And y'all have been the absolute best part. Thank you so very much from the bottom of my heart. Really and truly. And as always, I want to thank you for coming down here, listening to me, letting me get it off my chest. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Y'all are the best choir. Amen. All right. Until next time. Love you. Mean it. Bye.